Section 5 is all about further processing of joint products. Now in order to fully understand this section and the decision that we're going to look at shortly, we need to think about some brought forward knowledge to begin with. This section involves you knowing a little bit about process costing. So let's just imagine that we've got one process that we'll call P1. Now a number of different costs are going to go into that process and we've got some materials, labour and production overheads. Now the labour and production overheads are sometimes grouped together and called conversion costs. Now we're also going to refer to these costs as joint costs. Now out of this process, let's just say we get three products. Product A, product B and product C. And possibly we might be able to sell these products in this state. However, it might be possible to further process them by doing some something else to them. Let's call that process two and make them into products that are slightly different that we can then sell for more. So we'll call those A1, B1 and C1. Now we'll put some more cost in here, maybe some more materials go into the process. And then we need to decide, do we sell at this point? So two processes going on. A decision that we're going to look at shortly is, do we sell at this point here? Or do we further process and sell later on at this point here? Now, before looking at that, let's turn our attention to these joint costs. Now, in order to value inventory and to prepare financial accounts, we need to cost out products A, B and C. And that means that we're going to have to apportion the joint costs between the products in some way. Now, you can see in paragraph 5.5, we've got a number of ways in which we might actually apportion them. We might use physical quantity, so units that we produce, or maybe weight, or maybe volume. We might use relative sales value. In other words, if we've got more sales proceeds from each of the products, then we're going to charge them with more of the joint cost. Or we might use net realizable value, which just looks at the proceeds of each, but minus any further costs of getting them into that saleable condition. Now we're concerned with decision making and the first decision is the one about do we sell the products now or do we further process them? Now joint costs in this instance are not relevant and the reason for that is that they are apportioned arbitrarily but also that they are sunk. They've already happened, so regardless of whether we sell the products now or whether we further process, it won't make any difference at all. We've already incurred them. The second decision is about process viability. And if we're considering whether the process is viable at all, we need to think about the total cost going into that process and the proceeds that we're going to get from it. So if we wanted to answer the question, is it worthwhile doing process one at all, then we'd have to cost out the joint costs and compare it with the proceeds that we get from selling products A, B and C. In lecture example four, we're going to have a look at the two decisions that I've mentioned previously. First of all, about further processing and secondly, about process viability. But first of all, let's just have a look at the process account. Now process accounts are used in process costing and you can see on the left we've got the things that are coming into the process and on the credit side we've got the things that are going out of the process. 
So we've got our materials, our labourer and our variable overhead. And these are our joint costs. And you can see that we've got 5,000 units going in. And in the end, we need 5,000 units coming out as well. So we need to make sure that that account balances in terms of units. Now, in this process, there are two joint products, product A and product B. We've also got some normal loss and 500 units are expected to be lost in this process every time we do it. Now, the fact that that is a zero in there means that there is no scrap value. If there was a scrap value for this normal loss, it would be entered there. And that means that all of these joint costs here have to be absorbed by these units of A and B. So how has this been done? Well, let's think back to our formula. Our total joint costs are 47,700 and there is no scrap value. The total number of units we expect is 5,000 minus 500 normal loss units. And that comes to $10.60 per unit. Now that's how this has been allocated to these products. So let's just take product A. And product A, there's 2,500 units. And if we cost that at $10.60, we actually get back to $26,500. If we do the same with product B and you were to do 2,000 units at $10.60, you'd come out with $21,200. So that's just a little bit about how the process account has been put together. Next, we're told that each of the products can be sold separately and they can be sold immediately after the process or they can be further processed individually before being sold. Now we're told the selling price after the process. We're told the selling price after further processing and then also some variable costs as a result of the further processing. And losses cannot be sold, which we know because there was a zero in the process account. So in part A, we're looking at the decision as to whether we should further process or whether we should sell at the what we call the split off point after the first process. So what this is, is just a comparison of the revenue that we're going to receive if we sell it now compared to what we'll get if we sell it later. Now, don't forget that we said that the joint costs here are not going to be relevant because they've happened regardless of what we do. Now, if we sell it now, then A is going to give us $10 and B is going to give us 12. However, if we sell it later, we are going to get $13 and $15, but we're going to have to incur some more cost to get there. So 13 minus 375 cost gives us 925 dollars and 15 minus 275 gives me 1225 dollars. So let's take A first and we can see the higher is going to be 10. And that means that the correct answer would be to sell it at the split off point. For product B, the correct answer is going to be to further process because we get 25 cents more when we further process over if we sold it split off point. In part B, we've got to determine process viability. We're going to make two different assumptions. In part one, we're assuming the products are both sold at the split off point. In part two, we're assuming that they can't actually be sold at that point. They have to be further processed. So if you remember now, we said that the joint costs were relevant. So let's take the first one and let's look at the revenue. So the revenue that we're going to get from product A 
is two and a half thousand units at ten dollars a unit so that's going to give us twenty five thousand dollars and for product B we've got two thousand at twelve dollars giving twenty four thousand dollars now the joint costs in total are forty seven thousand seven hundred dollars and that gives me an overall profit of thirteen hundred dollars so the answer to that is yes it is viable moving on to part two well now the revenue is going to be higher so we've got two thousand five hundred at 13 which gives me 32,500 for product B I've got 2,000 at $15 giving me 30,000 so in total that comes to sixty two and a half thousand dollars I've got my joint costs of 47,700 but I've also got my further processing costs. So for product A, two and a half thousand and the cost was three dollars seventy five. So that comes to nine three seven five. And for product B, two thousand units at two dollars seventy five. So that comes to five and a half thousand dollars. So if we take the sixty two and a half thousand revenue and deduct all of these costs, we actually end up with a net loss of seventy five. So if we couldn't sell at split off and we had to further process these, then actually this process is not viable.